Thank you for joining us for the Ubis Canyon County Park virtual tour and wildlife discussion. My name is Dr. Ann Ferguson, and I am Executive Director of Bay Area Older Adults, which I will call BAO for short. BAO is a nonprofit organization that improves the health and well being of 42,000 adults age 50 plus each year. We trek on nature trails, learn about different cultures, explore historic sites, experience new culinary flavors, and help connect you to people with shared interests. Since 2013, we have taken more than 4,500 seniors who have walked more than 13,600 miles in more than 30 parks. Pictures from some of those hikes are shown here, as well as our website link. Today we are learning about some of the wildlife and taking a walking tour of Uvis Canyon County Park. This park is nestled in the upper Uvis Canyon on the eastern side of the Santa Cruz Mountains. And it is shown here with the red balloon. It's one of the most remote of the Santa Clara County parks. This park is known for its six waterfalls, some of which flow perennially. There are more than 1,100 acres of dense forest made up of coast redwoods, knobcone pine, big leaf maple, California buckeye, and California bay laurel. We will begin with a live interactive discussion of the wildlife that inhabits Uvis Canyon County Park. Next, we will follow Uvis Creek Trail, which meanders along Uvis Creek and by Lower Falls, where we'll meet some birds and butterflies and a lizard with a bright blue tail that are native to this habitat. Afterwards, there will be time for questions and answers. Being that we are currently having many fires going on in our area, I thought it would be relevant to talk about knob, knob cone pines that grow in this park, since they are dependent on fire for survival. Knob cone pines start putting out cones at a young age and each year's new growth is marked by a circle of cones. The cones contain their seeds and the cones only open to spread the seeds at temperatures above 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the temperature we usually use to bake our favorite cookies. This means that the past century of human fire suppression has hindered the knob cone pine from spreading its seed and populating more of the forest. One peculiarity of the knob cone pine is that some of the cones cluster right around the trunk. As the tree grows, if no fire comes along, the trunk will eventually envelop the cones until they are entirely encased in wood. Scientists have opened these cones and the seeds are almost as viable as fresh seeds. 
Another way the knob cone is dependent on fire is that it needs soil with high pH and high levels of phosphorus and nitrogen, which are created by fire. Most trees cannot grow in this type of soil, so knob cones are usually the first to grow in fire cleared areas. Knob cones don't grow very tall, 25 feet at the tallest, and need sunlight. The last way knob cone pines are dependent on fire is that fires ensure the tall trees are kept in check so that the knob cones can get enough sunlight. Next, I want to explain how to get to this more remote county park. Whether you're coming from north or south, you're going to need to get on County Highway G8 or Uvis Road. So whether you're coming from the south and heading north on Uvis Road or coming from the north and heading south on Uvis Road, you're going to head west on Croy Road and take it for 4.4 miles, passing Svidel, a private Swedish-American cultural heritage and recreation center, just before you reach the end of the road and the park kiosk. There is a $6 parking fee, and there are plenty of picnic tables and restrooms near the main entrance. The trail we are taking today follows Uvis Creek, which is shown in the slide with the blue line that I'm tracing over with my arrow. Uvis Creek is a 30 mile long, mainly southward flowing stream, originating at Loma Prieta Peak of the Santa Cruz Mountains in Santa Clara County. The creek descends through Uvis Canyon County Park, through Uvis Dam and Reservoir near Morgan Hill. It passes through Uvis Creek Preserve and ends in Christmas Hill Park in Gilroy. Importantly, Uvis Creek supports a population of steelhead trout. Steelhead trout are listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act. Steelhead are andronomous, which means they spend part of their lives in the sea before going to fresh water, such as rivers and creeks, to breed. Before Uvis Dam was built in 1957 to create Uvis Reservoir, our local steelhead spawned in the fresh water of Uvis Creek. Their offspring spent three years in Uvis Creek, growing into juveniles, who then migrated from Uvis Creek to Bajaro River and onto Monterey Bay's saltwater to grow to adulthood. At the mature age of five, adult trout follow the river upstream back to Uvis Creek to spawn. Once the dam was built, the only way the adult fish could migrate back to the creek to spawn was for humans to physically move them from Uvis Reservoir to Uvis Creek, and of course, vice versa. If we have a rainy winter, then winter months, are one of the best times to visit this park because the waterfalls are full. <coughs> Another reason is to see ladybugs. In the Western United States, adult convergent lady beetles typically spend up to nine months from May to February hibernating in mountain valleys 
far from potential food sources. Starting in February, ladybugs gather in aggregations to mate, as shown in this photo that I took. If you visit the park in the winter, you are likely to see these large ladybug love parties. In the spring, the adults disperse in search of prey and suitable egg-laying sites. Before we discuss other insects found at this park, let's do another poll to find out how many people have seen this blue butterfly with spots on the edges of its wings in one of our local parks. Go to your polling tab and click on your choice to have it recorded. Then go back to the video conference tab. This blue butterfly is called the Akmon butterfly. Males of the species have blue upper wings, as shown here, and females have brown upper wings. Both have a white gray underside with spots on the tips of their wings. Interestingly, the Akmon blue has a mutualistic relationship with ants, whereby the adult butterflies store their larvae in ants' nests to protect them from parasitoid wasps. In exchange, the larvae secrete honeydew that the ants use for food. Who knows the name of the butterfly in this video? The choices are California Sister, Swallowtail, Bay Checker Spot, and Monarch. Go to your polling tab and click on your choice to have it recorded. Then go back to the video conference tab. The butterfly in the video is called a bay checker spot butterfly. This local butterfly is threatened and likely to become endangered because its food source is also having a hard time flourishing. The adult butterflies feed on the nectar of dwarf plantain, shown here, which grows in serpentine rich soil found in the Bay Area. They also lay most of their eggs on this plant. Their larvae eat dwarf plantain leaves and purple owl's clover, which is a flower. Before we begin our walking tour, let's look at the route we will take. Naturalist Mike Hunt and I visited the Uvis Canyon County Park in June. This park is usually very busy in the summer because children are out of school. In the summer, the park is good because it has a lot of shade due to its dense forest cover, and the waterfalls always have some water in them even when there are drought conditions. The trail we are taking is called Uvis Creek Trail. It is a nice short loop of less than one mile, but you can see a lot on this trail. We took a counterclockwise route, which took us past a couple of campsites, on a paved road before we got to Uvis Creek Trail, where we went 
along it in a clockwise fashion. And at this point in the trail, you can see that we are running along Uvis Creek. At this point in the trail is where there is a stop for a great view of Lower Falls. As we head down the Uvis Creek Trail, we see and hear the loud call of a male Stellar's Jay. The male jays are bright blue. They are large songbirds with chunky bodies, rounded wings, and a long tail. Their bill is short and powerful. One striking feature is a prominent triangular crest that stands nearly straight up from their head like a mohawk haircut. These jays are also known as bullies by other birds because they steal food, eggs, and chicks from other birds' nests. We hear the sound of Uvis Creek get louder the further we walk. At the opening between some trees, we can see Uvis Creek flowing quickly downstream. These waters are where our local steelhead trout come back to spawn. Look quickly as we spot a female robin jumping the rocks in the creek. You can catch a glimpse of its warm orange breast in contrast to its gray-brown wings and dark head. When in flight, you can see the white patch on their lower belly and under their tail. You can also hear their cheery song. We are lucky today as this is the third bird we spotted on the trail. These little brown birds are called little brown creepers. They love to climb trees by hooking their curved clawed feet into the bark and they search the crevices for insects to eat. So it's Akron, oh, Akron. A-C-M-O-N, I think. <laughs> but once it's sat down, you can't see the blue. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's a problem. Along the trail, we pass some fallen trees cut into logs. We can feel a nice, cool, and crisp breeze coming off the creek that feels like air conditioning. To the right, we find a tree covered with rough gooseneck moss. It looks like a shaggy rug. Because of its fuzzy appearance and tail-like shape, it's also called the electrified cat's tail moss. Our naturalist, Mike Hunt, is ready to take a dip in the lower falls. 
Even though it's summer, there's plenty of water in this waterfall that ranges between 25 and 30 feet high. Holy guacamole! We spotted a juvenile western skink. She's decked out in smooth, shiny scales, and her dark colored body contrasts with her four creamy stripes running from head to tail. Most notable is her long, bright blue tail. If grabbed by a predator, a skink releases its tail, it'll thrash and twist after being dropped. This distracts predators and allows the skink to escape. They'll slowly regenerate tails that are as long or longer than before, but never blue again. The remainder of the trail takes us upstairs and uphill. At the last leg of the trail, we end up at the top of the waterfall. Thank you so much for joining us on our Uvis Canyon County Park Tour.